your own thing You do your own thing You know that it's true You are what you do Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome to Pyrograph Live from the Albuquerque Press Club. I'm Perry Packer, your host. I'm here with Clark Conde, our creative director. We work at Pyrograph, which is an online creative career magazine featuring, featuring daily posts from working artists, musicians, and other creatives. They share their stories, experiences, and lessons learned. We're at pyrograph.com. You should check us out there. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Instagram. YouTube increasingly because of this show is helping us get that going. So that's cool. And we also have a website, pyrograph.com. <laughs> we do have a website, pyrograph.com. Normally I would say call into the show. Right. But I'm not going to say call into the show today because I've been having technical problems. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll talk about those in a little bit. Uh, our guest tonight is Nancy Zestudel. She's the owner of Central Features Contemporary Art, which is this really awesome gallery downtown Albuquerque. They're in the process of moving from one cool location to a cooler location a really nice location yeah. and we're going to talk to her about the new stuff that's happening with her gallery because mm-hmm. they're moving on up moving on up it's cool um so before we talk to nancy uh, i want to chit chat a little bit with with clark and with the creeping hand of jeremy kinter jeremy are you going to come over and talk to us or are you going to come over come over and chit chat with us can you can you leave your station um, Jeremy, we, we missed you last week, but Turtle stepped in. Whoa, careful of all the cables. Speaking yeah. of technical problems. Come on over. Um, life's a technical problem. Oh, man. Here it comes. Hey, See, Jeremy, I'm welcome to the show. Hobby. It's yeah, so thanks. nice to have you thanks. here. But you're, not in, you're not in the shot, though. You're not in the shop. Yeah, see, right. see technical problem. No, yet. we're gonna Wait, we're, we're gonna change that. Right. See, we can change so, that. Yeah, All we, we gotta do is just switch have cameras. A, yeah, have Jeremy over there. It's um, cool. So this is uh, I'll, I'll say this is our last like normal standard show of the season, and then next week is going to be the Pyrograph Awkward Holiday Office Party. We're really excited about it. We are excited about that, and but. We won't have, I mean, we'll, you know, we'll probably have a shout out about it at the time, but this is our first season and yeah. we'll be wrapping up the first season. It's true. And then we go on um, holiday. We, we're going to take a holiday, catch up with some of the shows, uh, maybe like, I don't know, tweak the format a little bit, yeah. bigger and better things uh, next year. I want to thank you for a great season, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. you I like mean, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've enjoyed it and I personally like to run tech stuff, so no, it's that's great. been a lot of fun. And also, I'm excited about the the holiday party because it just gives me an excuse to get blackout drunk. <laughs> right. So it's going to be really, really yeah. awkward. <laughs> sure. I'm going to get really weird with it. Right. And, and, and I want all that Pyra swag, which is actually cool stuff. There's so much fun Pyra swag. There is. There's a lot of Pyra swag. And I've been detailing it, documenting it. Yeah. There have um, been photos. We're putting them up on the event page. You go to our Facebook page and Facebook then you'll page. see uh, there's a link pinned to the top of Pyrograph's regular old Facebook page about right. the event. And you go go there and you'll see all these photos. You'll it's see great. all the photos. And they're on Instagram. And, of course, on the Instagram feed. Yeah, which is just strictly photos. Well, and, uh, it's bridging uh, together two worlds, my love of thrifting and weird vintage shit, mm-hmm. with my love of publishing and my right. love for Pyrograph. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've been wanting to, to downsize on some of the cool vintage shit that I have. And I was like... <gasps> perfect pyra swag like there's a there's an eight millimeter splicer in there mm-hmm. uh, word has it there's a light bright we'll see if that if that comes out in the photos people are gonna have to look for that They're like, have to look for like that. you said you know it's one of these uh, confluences of uh because what i enjoy Interests of course and is, passions is uh you know i like i like uh shooting different products and uh, I like doing that in a Christmas scene. Yeah. Um, and then I like, uh, you know, a, an immense amount of of work, set, you know, like with lots of photos going right. out all the time. So, Jeremy, you cannot just go in and bulldoze your way into any present, any, any swag you want. I just want you I to can't, know. I can't bulldoze my way into something? No. I mean, no, no matter how drunk you are, I want to just make sure you understand these are for our guests. No, you can fall down the stairs if you want, but that's... I don't know if you know this, but this is America, Perry, and I'm going <laughs> to bulldoze my way into those prizes whether you like wow. it or not we're still figuring out exactly how they're being given out but it's going to be a democratic fair um process not influenced by alcohol okay well i like <laughs> i like democratic i like some keywords you're throwing out there um i don't like not influenced by alcohol 
because some of my life decisions are. Hey, just speaking so. of alcohol, because Tractor has been really good to us in the past. You're now yeah. working at Tractor, right? Yeah, I work. And you're um, doing that. I work at Tractor uh, they, with Carlos you away from Contreras. Them. I know he's they're eating up all my time, um, but I love it, and uh, I get to work with some wonderful people. Seems like a great place with to Sky work. Sky and uh, Nicole and David. Yeah, and they're um, they're treating me really well, and I'm learning the ropes. And it brings together beer and culture too. It's it not does. Just it's beer. nice. It's so nice. It's, it's a perfect know, equilibrium. Kinda... And I'm operating more on the beverage side, so I'm learning a lot more about coffee or cool. not coffee. Coffee, beer, but it's basically <laughs> the same thing. Right, yeah, sure, they're both beverages. They are all. both beverages, they're brownish. Yeah, brownish. and, and mm-hmm. you have to roast them. Yeah, yeah. Here, it sounds like you're you're still on the, you know, good luck with the learning. Um, it sounds like a process, <laughs> and I'm good to hear you're doing it. Yeah, uh, and thank like you for solving all our technical troubles here. Yeah, well. of course, well, Turtles, the uh, magician. Well, the, the, you know, some two so. of my favorite people doing this. Speaking of technical troubles, I'm sorry for everybody who's tried to call me for not just the last week, but the last, like, two weeks plus. Um, Has it been off that long? No, it's been, I can't receive calls, especially at my house, and I work at home. So what oh, happened was... because of I Verizon? S- well, it is because of Verizon, i got to say. And they've been kind of helpful in trying to help me solve it. But because now you're getting calls? No. Oh, so they really haven't they been They tried. Yeah. They went through it. We went through this whole, like, Twitter support thing Twitter where they were support. telling me, they are telling me, like, every time I lost a call, I should hit star or pound eight three or something. And then I was doing that, and then I called after I had done that a number of times, and then they're like, well... Uh, it's been a big, it's been a big clusterfuck, is what wow. it's been, and so I don't know. They're trying, and I'm supposedly getting a new phone tomorrow. But it just brings home technical troubles can be such a pain. So I've been like, you know, I'm sure. also a parent of two. I'm trying to run this magazine, yeah. blah blah blah, and I'm like, hello, hello, hello. People are like, hello, I can't, I can't hear you. No, you you called a couple and times. And I know. I just hung up and That's blocked really your number because I've always had good, I've always had good service. So Verizon. everybody loves Verizon. Yeah. That's the thing. They've been trying, <laughs> but you know, when you're independently, um, an independent worker, technology dealing with this crap sucks so bad. You don't have like a department. You know, I it doesn't. What do you guys do? I mean, I don't. What do people um, do? You just, you just cr- curl into a ball and cry. I just have to start drawing. You know, if I, you know, a right. technology fails, I'm pretty much just screwed like, as a photographer. I just have to start drawing stuff. When technology fails, I fix it immediately because otherwise, I won't be able to work on anything. You have to. You have to. And it just seems like it's it's an inis- it's increasingly inescapable. As much as I try to be like neat and I back stuff up and I you know, but right. you can't get away and then it just always it's just such an impact on your It is on your life. It is. Yeah. Well Well, well I'm gonna jump off here. Okay. Because I need to check on things. Thanks for Tell having Nancy me on guns. Over. I'm gonna get Nancy yeah, over. Gonna, come over hey, yeah. Oh, so I wanted to mention a couple things. While you're doing if, that, yeah. Bye Jeremy. It's bye, been guys. nice seeing you. Love um, you, Jeremy. Um, um see you at the party. Uh, but I wanted to mention something about the, um, the, the we're headed off to the uh, fundraiser. Yeah, we're going to a fundraiser tonight. Um, uh, for the Red Wagon Farm with Chemo. Yeah. Shout out to Chemo. Chemo put together this great fundraiser with a zillion bands. Zillion bands. I'm playing. I put together a bunch of people to play with me. Right. You're playing right after me. My whole crisscross uh, set is going um, up. That's awesome. There's going to be belly dancers. Belly dancers, I know, um, are going to be there. Uh, it, it's going to be a fun free-for-all and raising money for her community garden and farm. It's going to be awesome. Red Wagon Farm. Yeah. And so and that's. My friend Mary uh, and her husband or her partner, uh, Mark, are involved with that farm as well. Yeah. Mark's and one of the co- is a, the a co-founder. Bunch of great people have There's going to be. It's happen. going to be a. It's a really great shoe. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exciting. Awesome. So that's tonight. We're going to head over there. Um, um, and thanks to Kimo for putting that on. Yeah. Nancy, welcome. Hi. Here, Hello. Come, come, come scoot on in. Um, and what else? I guess uh, we don't have. Okay. So people should just RSVP to our party. Oh yeah, RSVP. the party. Yeah, we'll just, get back to, yeah. Just, Boy, we're really. I'm just, you know. I want to wrap that up. Yeah. We're gonna and um, anything else important to announce? I don't think so. No, That's just RSVP step. to the to the party. Uh, you, ha- you have to do that. And to keep learn watching about for the, the swag. Uh, you know, secret location. Awesome. Hey. And Hi. Hi. Welcome. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I think so. Jeremy's, Jeremy's on top you. of it. Jeremy, I see him checking yeah. his phone right now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, as long as as long as Jeremy can hear Nancy. Sure. We're good. We're good. That's great. <laughs> um, Nancy's yeah. the Stoodle, is who is the founder, owner, proprietress yeah. of 
Central chief bottle features. washer as well, I'm That's sure. Right, exactly. Central features contemporary art. Yes. A really great gallery. Yeah, That's been open for how long? I, we, We've been over open just over a year. That's it. So yeah, not very long. We opened in September. I was gonna guess two, I was gonna guess two and a half years. No. Just but you know your presence, I don't know. That's great to know that. You've oh, you've thanks. you've hit the ground running. Yeah, well, it's been a good first year. We um we've loved being open and you know the we had a very full year of exhibitions and artist talks and different yeah. events and we're thrilled when people show up for those things. So <laughs> that's always great. Yeah. And um yeah, we got to work with some great artists, um both local and visiting artists this year and so we're looking forward to keeping that going. Awesome. I want to ask you a little bit about, you know, the ins and outs of running a gallery and sure. the events and all that kind of stuff. But first, I just want to ask uh, about your move. You're moving yes. right now, right? That's the big news. Um, so I just sent out the press release. I guess it was last week mm -hmm. um, talking about the official announcement um, that we're moving pretty much just right around the corner. Um, and we'll be above Richard Levy Gallery. So right. it's at 514 Central. Yeah. And um, that's also right next door to 516 Arts. And exactly. You're like really this exciting. wonderful little cluster there. Much more high exactly. profile location yeah way more visibility um and just the proximity to richard levy gallery and 516 arts is great you know selfishly for us um but it also all three of us are kind of considering that you know that's like arts core arts complex right downtown where there's three spaces um that exactly. are each you know working with contemporary art but in fairly different ways so yeah. you you know it's like a one-stop kind of thing um which is exciting for me moving here from from living in bigger cities where there are sort of like gallery rows and different concentrated areas, right. especially in the downtown. So right. um, yeah, we're really excited and Richard has been a great partner in making that possible for us. It's a beautiful second story space. I can't wait. I've seen a few yeah. photos. You've kind of trickled out a few. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. it looks beautiful and airy, and yeah, it's it's huge to me. It's absolutely huge, yeah, um, which is exciting. And is it like twice or three times the size it's of like your maybe previous? almost four times? Are you serious? Is our, it really that much larger? Right now, yeah, our space right now is very small. It's only about yeah. eight hundred square feet. Um, okay, and this is maybe twenty five hundred to three thousand square wow. feet. Wow, so really large. this wow. is great. Um, yeah, it's can super Paragraph, exciting. Can we do some events there? Yes, totally. We do, <laughs> uh, we've been talking about this for a yes. while, trying to yeah. collaborate. Now, oh, this would be wonderful. It's totally possible. Great. And that's one really exciting thing is that you know we actually now have this space to host people and host events in a, a little bit more comfortable way than than we had before so that's great yeah, yeah. it's exciting be good. i well, know that you've gone through some technical challenges yes. we talked about Always. this a little bit <laughs> um and having uh, having put together a gallery myself i mm -hmm. it's the startup and it's the moving from one place to another yeah. that is like so oh that's right I now remember something about fluorescent lighting. Yes. And yeah. Always with the lighting. Yeah. It's always the lighting, an issue. But that's yeah. a big one. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's, it's the space it's that like we're in now. It's like everything, kind of. It, it is. You know? It's sort of everything. And so we, in this new space, we're just... Um, the, there was an architect's office up there before, so they were more focused on the space itself rather than yeah. the walls, say. So sure. we were putting up sheetrock, which is not a big deal. Um, but then we do need to do some lighting in this space, and... It's not really a big deal either, except for in my head. So, it, you know, I make it more complicated than it is, but right, we've right. been sort of going back and forth. But, yeah, we're going to do the um, go the uber contemporary space route and do some really nice fluorescent lighting so it'll be super clean and... And awesome. really illuminate the whole space. So, yeah. When will it be open? I don't mean that to say. Um, I don't be like, when is it opening? I hate, you know, as well, a writer, people are like, when are you going to done with your when book? When's it? Shut up. up. I know. <laughs> Stop asking. Um, no, we're, we're aiming for February 6th. Um, so that is the opening. All three of us, Richard Levy and 516 and Central Features, will all have an opening that evening. Um, so that'll be our kind of grand reopening. And. Exciting. Yeah, again, sort of one-stop shopping for art. <laughs> Let's collaborate. <laughs> that happens good. to be our, that'll be our third birthday. Oh, really? We, yeah, we launched on February 4th in 2013. Oh, nice. So, I don't know, maybe we can like, maybe we yeah, can do maybe that. we should do Co something. Co-promote something. Oh, yeah, cool, yeah. that's great. Yeah, that's exciting. Really so nice. So, let me ask you this then, because you, you, you schedule things out, obviously, ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Have you had to make adjustments from going, because you have enough space for, you know, four times as much right. artwork. Right. So how was that? What <laughs> what was the process with that? Well, it, it worked out really well. I love these sort of magical moments that happen. But um, we didn't have anything planned for December or January anyway. And that just happens to be the time that we're moving. And then the first show that we had scheduled for 2016 will actually benefit from more space. We're, um, nice. we're showing paintings from Rachel Stein, who's mm -hmm. here in Albuquerque. She's um, an artist that moved here so a couple years ago, I guess. She teaches at UNM. 
Um, and then um, some sculptures from an artist named Jillian Conrad coming from Houston. Um, so their work is incredible. And I, you know, like I said, I think it'll really benefit from having more space. So, and that's more my aesthetic awesome. too, is to have it, you know, not quite so crowded. Yeah. Um, just, just give everything a little bit more room. So nice. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what it what it takes to run a gallery. It's more than just like getting artists and putting stuff on the walls, yeah. right? And, yeah. and I say that also having watched what you guys do, and you guys not only do events, but you get topical, and you've worked a lot with kind of environmental, like yeah. climate change issues and some like some meaty issues and right. current issues. And right. I, I I would imagine that that has helped you um, establish yourself, but. How, how does it work for you? What do you what do you focus on to get attention to your gallery? Well, um, there's a little bit of background to it. My experience is in the nonprofit art world, but I always wanted to start a business. And so um, my partner Ian and I have lived in Albuquerque for several years. He grew up in New Mexico, but we've been in Albuquerque for about four years now. And we were really trying to decide if we wanted to stay here and yeah. if it made sense for us to stay. And part of the reason um, that we ended up deciding to stay is that we decided to open the art gallery. So yeah. we thought before we just jump ship, we'll give it, you know, 110%. Right. And um, part of the deal with us deciding to open a business Business, especially an arts business that can a commercial art space you know that can get sort of really gross and money driven yeah. we really wanted to focus on working with artists that were involved with issues that we were passionate about awesome. and so that's environmental and social issues mm -hmm. um, but at, on the other side I'm interested in working with artists that don't necessarily have an agenda in their artwork that you know it's just work that I really appreciate that I think has has some sort of impact on the purely creativity sure. level um, so we're also interested in that value. And uh, so we, we found this little space on 5th Street, and um, it was affordable. So I sort of looked at my schedule, and I have a great um, director that I work for at my day job. And yeah. so we sort of shifted my schedule around so that the gallery nice. could be open several days a week. And um, here we are. That's great. Nice. Yeah. It's been great so far. Will the new gallery be open m more often? Is it? Are you probably for this first year? I'll stick with the. We're open Tuesday, Friday, Saturday right now. Yeah. Um, but the dream is to hire somebody. Yeah. Um, you know, to help us have some more open hours and just be a little bit more accessible for people sure. on a day-to-day -day basis. So that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, and you're doing an art rental business as well, out of here, right? We are. We j we've been talking about this for really ever since we opened, and it it honestly is a way to generate more income. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. But also, in a you know sort of parallel to that is a way to work with more artists because with our exhibition schedule you know we can do like at most maybe nine exhibitions a year and that's pretty busy yeah um so and we usually have a local artist and a visiting artist for each exhibition yeah and we're very exhibition driven in the yeah. gallery so and like you were saying topical you know sort of thematic um things for each exhibition so with the art rental service it sort of broadens the scope of artists that we can work with and mm -hmm. the artists that we can help support by hopefully getting a lot of their works out into the community right. whether in businesses um, or even individuals that want to rent artworks either to see if it's a piece they want to live with or right. if they're having a special event for galas things right. like that so we, we spoke a little bit before mm -hmm. the before the show about Maybe getting some artwork here. We were talking about mm -hmm. that last week too. And I, 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 we spoke about it. She says, you know, it's certainly something we could do. Yeah. Into the new year. I mean, yeah. right. you know, when we go into our second season, yeah. maybe yeah. with some artwork, yeah. that might be uh, spice things up. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that that would be no, that would be not as not as good. Yeah. Uh, no, no, we we would want to have some high quality artwork from. Uh, from the new uh, rental thing she has going yeah. on. Um, he doesn't look convinced. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's really great that you guys have this uh, this cluster happening downtown. There's been a lot yeah. of talk about Albuquerque downtown. Mm -hmm. Is it dying? Is it thriving? Yeah. Do you, have you see? I mean, you know, there's, on Facebook, yes. I, there's a lot of people, a lot of people talking about what direction it's going. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a little tough to say. I've lived downtown for 15 years now. Okay. And sure. uh, so seeing art businesses like this i mean that seems like a great like who could argue with that right. I mean, that seems like a great direction <laughs> yeah, yeah um what's your take on what's going on down there i mean it seems like it's doing okay it's yeah. not like a super thriving downtown right but i i also road trip a lot yeah and and i always my husband and i we love old downtowns we mm -hmm. all, wherever we hit a town we like go downtown and albuquerque's downtown is doing all right mm -hmm. you know we're yeah. not a huge huge city and yeah. some of them are like all boarded up mm -hmm. and ours is not like that so what's your take being down there probably much more than me one of the things that i 
well, several of the things I really appreciate about downtown is that it is still very accessible. Yeah. Um, some of the larger cities I've lived in, I'll say accessible and kind of personal feeling. A lot of the, yeah. um, some of the cities that I've lived in, you know, are definitely more um, like large financial headquarters, bigger yeah. corporations, things like that, um, which which is fine. But for Albuquerque, what I really notice is the the smaller businesses. So we've got, you know, our local bars, Anodyne, Sister. Yeah. Um, we've got food trucks downtown now. We have, you know, um, different arts venues, whether they're nonprofit or artist run or like Richard Levy Gallery, um, Sumner and Dean, you know, a, a sort of spectrum yeah. of... Um, not only the arts, but different different businesses downtown. I'd love to see more retail and you know more yeah. restaurants downtown to support that kind of stuff. Right. Um, but you know, I think it's it's a huge process. I think, and um, I think there's a lot of activity. I've been trying to go to some of the you know, zoning and planning meetings and just yeah. to kind of wrap my head around that whole process. Um, you know, and I'd love to see more artists involved in that and more vocal and what yeah. they want. Um, do you, do you run into problems with the zoning and I, I well, hear, I hear so many complaints, yeah. but sometimes you hear it from nightclubs and stuff like that, which, Hey, I'm a nightclub. I'm, I'm right. not saying, but I, you can kind of see a little bit more right. why. Right. Again, right. I'm a, I, you know, if any, residents are complaining about noise downtown it's like sorry sure. that drives me crazy there's been a downtown <laughs> but, there for the last 150 exactly. years so like right, it's been right. that noisy for but you know an yeah. art gallery maybe you, you wouldn't yeah. run into as many right. blocks it's what, you, I'll, I'll say <clears throat> knock on wood or yeah. laminate um the our process has been really simple and, yeah. and easy so far and um but i think that is because you know we're not getting a liquor license right. we're not you know our hours are we don't go into the evening right. we close at 6 p.m and right. any openings we have close at 8 you know it's like yeah. We don't really run into that kind of stuff. The one thing that I do try to advocate for is some sort of subsidy, whether it comes from the city or from the property owners themselves, to make the empty space downtown more affordable to mm -hmm. artists or really sort of any interesting yeah. business or pop up that could be in there because right. they can either make zero dollars a month on that or they could you know and bring it can in just a couple sit there hundred. Looking shitty. right. You right, know, right. You you were somehow involved with the Pacific exhibits, right? Right. Which yeah. I thought was so cool, and I yeah. know at one point it was it was it was open for a new, you know. Yes. And then I think it's filled now, right? No, it's still going. It's still still going. No, no, yes. no. But I mean, but it, oh. it was empty for a moment, and then it got filled, right? Like it's still the oh yeah yeah doing it? someone yes. Yeah. So we yeah. what we did was the Pacific exhibits window is um this just sort of awkward area yeah. in this building yeah. that's like basically behind the elevator shaft yeah. um, of this building, a historic building at, um, uh-oh, uh, Second and oh, Gold? I forget. Second and Gold? I yeah. Say, I'm, I'm I forgetting say. the address right. right now, but it's on Gold, right across from Gold Street Cafe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that, the, the property owner of that building um, was incredible and really generous to us and we met her through the um, Main Street Initiative oh, and yeah. they were at, at the time it was called TART, Temporary Art projects oh. downtown yeah. um and so that that's how we met her and her name's charlene schroeder and she's she's been great and so she let us take over that window and and swap out artworks every month and then it just became kind of too much for me to do and the yeah. gallery at the same time so um I just kind of asked around if anybody wanted to take over curating that. And so Rachel Harris Huffman is doing it now. Right. And there, there's an amazing installation right now um, of x-ray machines that an artist has done. So and cool. so she's sort of taken it to a whole new level. Is she doing it? Part, is she? I'm sorry. Is she part of Main Street, Rachel? No, no Rachel no, no. Harris. She. Um, I know her as an artist in the community. And mm -hmm. she's done some work with Harwood Art Center cool. for their CSA program. And so she's she's definitely really active and, and a great curator in that, that regard. Oh, that's neat. So if anybody yeah. wanted to get there are in there they would contact Rachel yeah they can contact her through the website pacificexhibits.com she's on Facebook yeah she's definitely present so so that's cool yeah now that you're going to have the new space yeah. putting everything together what can we see in 2016 what what's coming up yeah. what's well, great well gosh 2016 so we do we do schedule about a year out in advance so we do have our our schedule set for the next year um uh, so our first show is Rachel Stein, local painter, Jillian Conrad from Houston, a sculptor. Um, then our second show, we're, we are working with Jamie Porter Lara again, who's been an awesome artist to work with. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'll have new ceramic pieces from her and probably some 2D work as well. Nice. And we're um, also showing in the space at the same time, Matt Thomas, who is mm -hmm. an artist in Taos. And he's one of the founders of the Paseo uh, oh, yeah. sort of performance, you know, I missed off that the wall this year and it looked performance. amazing. Yeah, it's great. It's an yeah. amazing festival that yeah. Taos has totally embraced um and matt is like jack of all trades when it comes to the arts um matt's bakery i believe it's called he makes these delicious quinoa cookies oh, really? that they sell at the brew he has a project called food and shelter he's an he's an architect he's trained as an architect cool. mm -hmm. um we yeah so to, he's got so much stuff yeah he's yeah. he's lovely um so we're showing some paintings by him 
Um, God, we've got, uh, we're going to do a sustainable fashion show in the fall, which I'm really excited about. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to be partnering, um, hopefully, um, in the works, partnering with Izzy Martin on that and Hyper Clash from Santa Fe. Nice. Cool. Um, Izzy Martin is up in Nob Hill. Yeah. And we've got Margie Ware coming back to do, um, she has a presence here in Albuquerque. She's living in Detroit right now, but she's going to do a large vinyl installation in the space, um, really focused on the topic of guns. So I it'll, yeah. You, you posted something yeah. about that. super timely um so we'll do some programming around that and really That's get great. people involved so nice. i'm awesome. sure i'm forgetting something in there there's probably a couple sure, i've forgotten I bet. but yeah it's we're really excited and to have this space you know and the, the ability to do it is yeah. exciting well we always love to sh- share what you have so great keep, keep yeah letting thanks. paragraph no we'll, we'll do our best to put it out especially on social media thank you, uh, do you are you an artist a visual artist yourself i no. Oh, i yeah. um i thought I, you were gonna say yes well i paid for a degree in painting <laughs> but i'm definitely not an artist um that must have been fun Still to pay for. Yeah. Still yeah. paying it. Still paying for it. Um. <laughs> and running a gallery is the best way to <laughs> right. finance something exactly. like that, too. I mean, to you, you know, get so out right. and get into a lucrative <laughs> career like running a gallery. I mean... What a brilliant move! Yeah. Nothing. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> That's really wonderful. So, tell us about tell us about oh that. Oh my God! Well, I went to um, I went to Ohio the Ohio State University mm-hmm. um, for my undergrad. <laughs> oh, I heard of him yeah. over there. Ooh, you're a Buckeye. Um, awesome. That's right, a Buckeye, exactly. So, I I ended up switching majors and I switched to the art department and studied painting and drawing and then. Um, Gave it a good shot yeah. for my master's degree, but di- it just didn't stick. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so I sort of hopped around from different programs. Mm. And um, when I was at the University of Chicago for their studio program, uh, a good friend and I got a grant from the university to do to have a booth basically in an art fair that was called the Stray Show, which mm-hmm. was at that time the alternative art fair for Art Chicago. Cool. And so once we did that, it was it was just great, and I realized that I'm really more interested in talking about work and hearing yeah. why people make what they make rather than. Like I'm not a good maker yeah, yeah, yeah. at all, so I just sort of accepted that fact and right. and then stu- and then went on to study curating in San Francisco. Cool. Very I feel nice. kind of the yeah. same way about publishing, to be honest. Do you? I mean, I'm a writer, <laughs> but yeah. I but I don't. I'm not a creative writer. Sure. You know, I'm I'm really good at business writing. I mean, yeah. I just technical. I, I, it's, yeah, I can yeah. like lay things out. I have that's kind of my thing. But creative, no. Me neither. Uh, and you know, I like to pl- I play music and I yeah. play out, but I'm not. You know, it's not like I'm. I'm not going to be pursuing right. that as any sort of living. Exactly. But, you know, as a, as publishing, it's like presenting the work of other people. Yep. And I, I love that. Yep. Agreed. You know, so totally I guess I, I can relate. Sometimes I do feel uh, almost like um, publishing is similar to galleries. Yo, you know, I can see like, that. Yep. Poorly paid. Right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> difficult. Exactly. Time consuming. Thankless. Right. Yeah. right. Thankless. Yes. It's really great. Exactly. Well, here's That's to that. That's really cool. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> and and you moved here from Houston. Are, is, are I you, did. You were originally from Houston. No, um, no because you did. You, and so you lived in Chicago as well. I, yeah, I lived. See, in I grew Chicago. up in Milwaukee. So oh, I you know, did. Okay. I never lived in Chicago, but I went there to party all the you, time. Yeah. You know, you were when close you, enough. When, you're, when you live in Milwaukee, right. it's like, We're going to Chicago. <laughs> um, and my my current husband used to live there, so I, okay. I know Chicago yeah, close a little by, bit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, so. I I grew up in Ohio and oh, you um did. yeah that's where my husband so. grew up. Oh really? Yep. Every time I swear to God, anybody I that know. knows me will hear this all the time. Every yeah. time there's a group of people, there's always there's someone a, from I'm Ohio. I'm the same with Wisconsin. Always. I mean, yeah. there's like there's like a, the mid- a lot of the Midwesterners <laughs> yeah. come here. I think because it's like I think so too. freeing and it, you know yeah. open skies and the weather's good. So sure. Yeah, yeah I, very I different. You were from all. Ohio. Well, really. and I'm from Eastern Ohio. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, Rochester, New York. So I was gonna say, wait a second, hold on. Ohio, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I drove to Chicago. I spent a couple of days um, in Chicago for Christmas, and I like I always have to look at the map because it's yeah. co- it's always confusing to me. I think of Chicago as more of an East Coast city, but like right. it's not. It's, not at it's all. Very it's confusing. so not. <laughs> yeah, it's not at all. It's like the land of large white yes. people with you know. Like I get off the I get off the plane whenever. Oh I go, yeah. And it's like just people with big hands. <laughs> and everybody's really large. You know, I don't know. It's just funny that it's Chicago true. Stock. It's true. It, yeah, you can definitely tell when yeah. you're there. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, so I grew up in Ohio and then I um, yeah, I lived in Chicago for about a year and then I moved to California mm-hmm. and lived in L.A. and then did my grad work in San Francisco. Oh, cool. And then uh, from San Francisco, the only job I found was in Texas and uh, I sort of went begrudgingly. Uh, to Houston, like Texas. I know. I was like, "Wow, I am not, not, uh, not prepared for that." But I absolutely fell in love with Houston, and cool. um, I love Texas. And I know mm-hmm. that's not really PC to say in New Mexico, <laughs> right, right, right. But, but I, I absolutely love it, and um, I still write for an <laughs> <laughs> our technical. Uh, Jeremy's over here <laughs> messing with Texas right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
why. Houston is it was really good to me and still is. And I, I write for um, Arts and Culture, Texas Magazine out of Houston. Oh, cool. And still, uh, I'll be there in January. I go back as often as oh, possible. Yeah, yeah, it seems like I see on yeah. Facebook that you're there. Not I'm a big fan. <laughs> That's cool. I've yeah. only been there once. My dad was playing in a tennis tournament in oh, nice. Houston, mm-hmm. and it was really hot. Yes, and, very hot. Uh, but you know, you just go from one air conditioned zone to the next. Extremely air conditioned. But it was cool. Yeah. We because like, you know he yeah. only played one match a day, and right. so then I was with, there with my husband and kids, and my mom and my sister were there. We yeah, would go out and check out stuff, and I it was yeah. cool. Yeah, I liked it. There were uh, you know just the brief. It was like a week or so, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. were downtown. The yeah. tournament was downtown, which I you know I love that because yeah. that's where I always I don't care where I am. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be too. And exactly. um, so it's just like exploring cool yeah. neighborhoods and yeah I, I kind of enjoyed it it's an interesting city it really is and it um there's a it's huge really art community too. it's very international super, well, super I mean, diverse i don't know <clears throat> what came first the international community or that being a, such an international hub airport right it might i'm know. not sure sort of how that developed yeah. either but but being there that's one of the things i love about it. it it is a very diverse city yeah um socially culturally artistically and there there's a huge supportive art community there is a lot of money as well which you know people always bring up but I, I compare Albuquerque to Houston often because you know we face the same problems it's yeah. you know it's it the ratio the, the sort of ratio you know of money to number of organizations we're all kind of pulling for the same right. funding and you know we're all we're all facing similar problems well, in the arts. Interesting. I mean Houston had such a, a big issue in their arts community when Enron went down yeah. I mean there was right. I mean yeah. it just vaporized right. yeah. and nonprofits yeah. in general right I mean the whole thing just yeah. it sucked work. all it the air bad. out of everything well and I, I mean so much of the money you know it happened? was right I if I'm remembering correctly I was there right on the sort of the tail end of that happening but I'd that have to, was yeah yeah was and you know a lot of the arts money did come from the oil tycoons and you know a lot of the the wives of these oil sure. right you know people they they were building the art collections um right. which you know so there it's a you know it can be a, a sort of contentious issue but um but the bottom line is that you know they're aware of it that's one thing yeah. that i i loved was that it was totally part of the conversation yeah so it's you know and there there's amazing amazing artists coming out of there we show a lot of them at the gallery so and not Thanks. to mention, next time I go, you're going to have to tell me where to thrift because I bet yes, there's really there's amazing. Yes, there's amazing. I bet there's amazing thrifting. thrifting vintage. Yes, and amazing food. I mean, there, there's oh, yeah. just it's a great it's a great city to visit. There's a little town that we drive through a couple times when I've road tripped uh, eastward, Wichita Falls. Oh yeah. I mean, it's like you know you could tell it was big and <laughs> yeah, in its, time. in its day. Uh, right. But the thrifting there and the yeah. vintage malls. I mean, it's yeah, I know. a little it's nothing really town, good. and it's just like yep. oh my god. Anyway, yep. well, we, uh, we need to wrap up. We're just about out of time. Okay. Sure. I want to talk more with you know you got to come back in 2016. Yeah, totally. Um, I would love to talk more about I don't know what, when there's know, new what, shows once, coming yeah, up yeah, when new shows. When the whole once you've actually moved in and yes. gotten all the, the lighting installed yes. um, <laughs> all that figured out and we'll send sure. a photographer over awesome I know I know one <laughs> and um, I would love to, to keep the great. conversation going awesome sure. thanks guys so much yeah, I appreciate thanks it thanks for coming yay um, thanks Clark well thanks. thanks it's wonderful to be here as always as always our last real show now next week we're going to be... Well, real show. <laughs> well, okay, like our normal show sitting here. Next week, okay. it's going to look totally different. We're yes. going to be sitting out there. We're oh going to have God. a band. We're going to we're gonna maybe we're gonna maybe go for a whole hour. Might It'll be a work, longer show. A longer show. We're going to probably start at 7 instead of 6. Right. We'll put this all on our Facebook page, and then we're going to live stream the band. We're live stream the band. It's, it's our holiday... Uh, it's our awkward holiday office party. A, <laughs> next week, you got to RSVP to learn the secret location. Oh, wait. Uh, I just, <laughs> I just, oh. shut up. Okay. Keep talking, keep talking. No, there's, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, so, so RCP to find the secret location. The secret location. It's um, going to look totally different. When I say out there, I mean right. out there in the world. It's out there. To find out where the, yeah, oh, somewhere so out, no. out there yeah. in the world. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, definitely RSVP. And yes. then, um, you know, and then it's going to be great. It's, it's onward to the, what's it's Hurdle's going to be playing. Our the, favorite, is it our the favorite hurdle? band. It's Hurdle. It's just Hurdle. You can talk about that with Matt. Okay. Um, Hurdles will be playing. Farina has said yes to food. So nice. I know. Oh. I love Farina. Oh. Um, I love Farina. That's great. Uh, uh, all the pirate swag. Right. I need. We need to say no more. Uh, 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 pirate swag. Jeremy's already said he's going to embarrass himself. Awesome. It's going to so. be amazing. That's gonna so be great. Great. Yeah, he's pretty happy about that. So uh, <laughs> either either show up or watch the live video stream. Absolutely. So come back next time for the awkward holiday office party. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. You know who you are